Peacock 45, look what I have. A bolt action rifle. No, it's not a military surplus rifle for a change. Uh, I know you maybe get tired of some of those, but I love them. This is a newer rifle. It's a Savage. Not that, and I, a lot of people are just looking for a good all-around hunting rifle, whatever. Not necessarily something that's an old, you know, 60-year-old military surplus rifle or 100 years old. And that's what this is. You know, you got your high-tech stock. I see foam in there. Uh, you got uh, pads on the back here you can adjust and take on and off. But it is a Savage Model 11. Did I say that? Model 11 Scout. Scout rifle. Now you may be, many of you are familiar with the Jeff Cooper concept of the Scout rifle. Uh, kind of a, a do-all rifle that would get you through about any situation and uh, any kind of hunting and uh, just an all-around uh, good rifle in 308. Okay, chambering. 308 will handle most things. Uh, bolt gun is of course known for its accuracy and he liked it uh, configured so that the uh, scope or sights the scope mounts would be forward of the action and uh, you've got that there's a rail that goes with this I'll show you uh, so you could mount a scope or a red dot you know right there and uh, that's in keeping with that concept of the scout rifle and it also has a magazine that holds 10 rounds okay so it is a bolt gun but it holds 10 rounds and you gotta put the magazine in the proper way. Uh, a little different from an M14. It kind of hooks at the front and the rear, but you're supposed to hook the rear and then the front. There we go. Uh, I've got it in there. We have uh, struggled a little bit with that. I know we shot one of these at the Iraq veteran shoot uh, in Georgia, and we had uh, considerable trouble with the magazine. I don't know what the door story was. Anybody sat on it, drove over with a truck or whatever. We've uh, not had too much trouble with this one. It works, you just have to put it in correctly insert it correctly okay so well, let me take a couple shots and see uh, if I can hit anything with it I've been shooting it for a few days here off and on enjoying it's got a Williams peep sight on it I stripped it down you know, it has a cheek piece here I'll show you that you can adjust the, the comb height there and everything but I took the rail off and uh, I just like them bare bones like this you know me so let's put a round in the chamber I like that uh, bolt handle it's kind of nice all right it's on fire there's your safety it's three position and it's on fire so let's set something on fire like a two liter <laughs> yep it's a 308 all right <laughs> i really do like the big bolt handle oh, i knew that was off all right nothing like a 308 round to wake you up got some Pizzazz to it. Let's hit the plate over there or try to. Boy, that sight's not too visible in this kind of lighting. I'll try it again. Yeah. It fits well. It's it's nice. I think it has all the spacers on it, maybe. Uh well, let's go ahead and try one of the two liters sitting over there. Try that red one down there by the barrel. Has that accu trigger, so I can't blame it on the trigger. I can blame it on the sights, as I can barely see them. <laughs> yeah, I'm holding right on that. It might be going just a little bit high. It's empty now. Uh, wow, that sight is gray. Where uh, the light is kind of waning here uh, this evening. But uh, if this were mine, I'd have to put a white dot on there at least a little white paint i would have an excuse for missing then uh or no excuse right so you can see it's drilled here and the rail goes right there i got the tape on it to hold the screws so i don't lose those it's because they'll come with the package this is from buds we appreciate them uh, sending it and uh be sure you check the description for all the information about buds and the link to uh, federal premium another of our key sponsors that we appreciate immensely okay so check that out and uh Hopefully you support people that support us when you can, when it makes sense. We appreciate it. Uh, so that's that. And then this is a comb. I just, uh, just slips right there and you can adjust it up or down depending on how high your, you know, your sight is, your scope. You wouldn't have it that high, of course. I got the screws in it. But 
uh, it fits right there. All right, it's a nifty little uh, cheek piece there. And uh, as I say, it's adjustable back here. The spacers, I like that. Uh, I have a shotgun with some choked spacers like that. I don't know if that's who makes those, but uh, yeah, I mean, you can just add two or three or one or none and just adjust your length of pull. So it's marvelous, you know, for someone who is not normal. You might be shorter than most people, or you might be taller than most people, and uh, it would accommodate that. Got an accu trigger in it, it's adjustable, I think, between uh, like about two and a half pounds to six pounds, so that's always cool. It comes adjusted around two and a half, I think, so it's right where I would want it pretty much. I wouldn't be messing with it probably myself, but you might. And that big old bolt knob is cool. It's got three position safety. You can put it on the, in the middle and it'll let you work the bolt, but it won't let you pull the trigger, okay? So that's kind of neat. And then it's got full safe where uh, nothing can happen back there, okay? It's locked up. So, uh, and it's got a, a aluminum rail in there, as I understand, kind of a bedding rail that uh, helps support that stock and uh, give it some, uh, you know, rigidity. Uh, it's got a muzzle brake, which I don't particularly like muzzle brakes, but that's one reason we're getting so much blast. And uh, it's got, uh, notice it's got a couple uh, sling mounts up here. So you have some flexibility there, of course. And uh, your mag release right there, which I will use. Okay. So, I mean, it's the simplicity of a bolt gun. You know, that's, the uh, bolt guns will never die, will they? They're known for accuracy, uh, simplicity. Uh, my gosh, militaries went to battle with them for decades and decades. That's why you see a lot of them around here. I, I like them. I like them. Don't have uh, any new ones though, do I? All mine are old. I like the old ones, the uh, surplus ones, but this is pretty cool. It's got a loaded chamber indicator, a cocked in indicator at the back of the bolt there. You notice that. Okay, that little I'll pull the trigger, close it. Now it's gone. Okay. So you got that. So, yeah. Okay. Things are uh, fairly smooth. Savage. We haven't really uh, seen many savages. Savages is a company that is uh, partly because i don't hunt i know that they have always had a lot of bolt guns seems like and i remember reading articles my gosh for maybe decades about how well get carried away there for 10 15 20 years about how they're one of the best bargain guns out there because i think back maybe you go back 30 years or more the some of the savage guns you thought cheap you know and they they changed that image i know in recent decades because I, I can recall lots of articles about people you know uh, gun writers bragging about the accuracy they're getting with a just a whatever two or three hundred dollar rifle as compared with an eight or nine hundred dollar rifle now this one in this configuration uh with all that it's got it is about eight hundred dollars okay it's not not cheap and i leave the ugly stickers on there of course because it uh, it'll be on e-gunner you know at butts gun shop uh, dot com and everything so I don't, I'm going to keep it as new as I can not beat it up or scratch it all I'm all I try to do with these is shoot them and we just love the opportunity to to, to get almost whatever we want within reason <laughs> and be able to shoot it and uh, make it a used gun but not abused okay used but not abused so we leave all the ugly stickers on and all that kind of thing so some people might like that uh, so anyway let's load up that magazine again now, let me show you again what I'm talking about. Uh, if you buy one of these, or this one, you, you're supposed to take the magazine and hook the, the rear first, and then, and then the front rocks in, okay? Of course, it's very simple when it's empty. When you get rounds in it, it becomes a little more, you know, well, not a problem, problem, but you just have to push it a little harder. So it's not like an M14 or some other mag where you go straight in or you hook the front. You hook the, the rear, and then it clicks in. All right, and I think I noticed that if you load it, just load nine in it, eight or nine, it, it's easier to, to to insert. Okay, so I'll try to count to eight or nine here. There's three, good old 308. This is four. This is what is it? 150 grain full metal jackets. What I shoot mostly because I don't really hunt. I just shoot. Now I've got some soft point from Federal here, and I think it is what 180 grain. Okay, soft point, we might shoot a couple of those. In case we are afraid, this one won't take out one of the, the vermin over there on the hill. Of course, gotta hit them first, right? Before it gets dark on me. 
I can probably come up with some other excuses about missing the two liters. Okay, it might be 10, I don't know. All right, let's put the mag in, hook the back, click it in there. All right, uh, you know, there, even though I don't hunt, there is just something appealing about a, a simple bolt action rifle. It really is, kind of like a lever gun. You know, it's you know, not that many moving parts. They're generally very strong. And uh, again, Savage has a good name. They, they really do. Uh, I'm not trying to sell you this rifle. Uh, there are probably other better, maybe, uh, rifles. I, I don't know. I, I, Remington's, you know, of course the 700's had some issues right lately, at least in the news, but it's considered a really good rifle. You got Weatherby, you got a lot of really top rifles. So this is uh, one of those that is a good rifle, kind of a no frills rifle and one that is uh, probably going to be pretty accurate uh, than meet your needs, I guess. And, uh, but anyway, uh, as always, uh, check around and uh, see what uh, people's experience uh, is being with you know this particular rifle or any rifle. There's no big secrets out there now that we have that thing called the internet. So a lot of you already know, are people having uh, good experiences with this rifle or not? Let's uh, take the safety off, put one in. <laughs> Already did it. Short-term memory loss. All right. Let's, uh, well, let me try a couple more shots at that two liter. <sighs> let me relax, take my time. See if I can see that sight. You know, I think it, it I haven't adjusted the sights. They seem to be right on close enough that it could be that uh, they do need a little adjusting. Let me try the orange one up there. Okay. I'm going to hold up a little more. Boy, made a lot of dust at least. I'm going to bring it down. That one looks like it's running out of orange. I must have nicked him. Let's try the red one again. Okay, I was actually holding too high, I guess. All right, let's try the red plate. There. Oh, that sight is just disappearing on me. <laughs> oh, we got another round. Let's, uh... Let's try that little thing of water right there. <laughs> oh man, obviously this is a rifle that uh, a lot of you, you would bench rest it and you would shoot it at long distance probably. And uh, that would be, that's not a thing I necessarily enjoy doing that much, shooting groups on paper at 300 yards. Uh, and of course that would tell you uh, what you need to know if you're looking for a hunting rifle where you're going to be maybe out out west shooting at longer ranges than say around here in most of Tennessee, Kentucky and you know these areas where I think like most deer if you're a deer hunter are taking it yeah you know, well some are taking it 20 yards 30 yards out of a tree stand or 10 yards but uh, you know you just don't get as many long shots uh, if you're a hunter okay not to overload it I think let's take that top one out make sure it goes in there okay so uh check around you'll see what people are finding out about that uh, pinpoint accuracy groups groups are getting in that kind of thing all right let's try that uh big thing of water right there yep it's a 308 right <laughs> and a two liter I'll shoot that pumpkin now, it won't do much to it, I don't think. <laughs> Put a hole in it. And this two liter right here. <laughs> Again, we've got an empty uh, case in the chamber, of course. Again, this is, we'll put safety on anyway. Or else not cocked, it won't go on. Uh, it's meant to be a handy rifle. You know, it's not that heavy uh, at all. 
I think it's seven point some pounds, maybe eight pounds. It's a, it's a very handy size and length. The barrel's 18 inches. It's a one and 12 twist. Uh, you know, and it's just, just a handy piece of hardware. And of course, with that kind of stock, it's designed to be knocked around. Uh, you know, it's not going to be affected by the weather and that sort of thing. Uh, functional, it, it's very functional. You know, again, being able to adjust the length of pull and having adjustable sides, and of course, putting optics on there that are of your own choosing. Uh, the flexibility on the sling, being able to adjust the trigger. Uh, looks like uh, Savage tried to please everybody on this by giving it that, that flexibility. All right. Take the empty out, put a live one in there. Now the safety will work. Okay. I really cannot see that little post. I like that little post because it's pretty narrow. I'm going to try the little plate over there. If I can find the post, i got to go up in the light to find it. There we go. Felt like it was right on. Okay, let's go back over the other one. Okay. So, try that little one again. Hold lower. Let's hold higher. <laughs> it could shoot just a hair of the right or something, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I didn't move the sides. I pull, I've been shooting it for a few days here off and on and kind of hitting the stuff I wanted to hit and I put it on paper actually too here at fairly close distance and it seemed to uh, seem to be about about on. Uh, maybe it's just a hair to the right. I don't not sure but it was it was so close I just didn't want to mess with the sides. I don't like to mess with them too much. If it's a firearm I'm going to keep. This is going to be my rifle then I'm always, uh, I'm continually tweaking them just a little bit at a time and uh, making sure they're as good as my eyes will will let them be, right? But a uh, rifle, I'm just kind of shooting for a while, giving you my impressions of it, and then uh, passing it on. I don't want to overdo it, <laughs> okay? So, 10 round magazine, and as I understand, these are uh, standard mags that fit the other some of the other model 11s and other uh, savage rifles it's not a, a magazine designed specifically for the scout rifle and so those are available there's a hook on the back there that, that fits up over a little lip in there piece of metal there if you can if you can see it but that hooks over that and uh, then you rock it forward okay easier said than done right yeah not too hard <laughs> like I said, we did struggle with one of these at the Iraq veteran shoot. All right. But I think it's the one Eric said he ran over with a bulldozer four times. Just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, we don't know. All right. Uh, I just got to shoot that pumpkin, that smart aleck pumpkin again. Cool. Oh, there's a little bit of cinder over there, but I'll, I don't know if I'll be able to hit it. Okay. Uh, I love the smoke of cinder in the morning. Okay, I intentionally held high that time. I'm not sure whether I'm not holding low enough or high enough. Or I'm just missing. I'm just getting a bad trigger break sometimes. I can't blame it on that trigger. It's a nice one. Let's go that little one again. Okay. I held on the bottom at about 7 o'clock. At least I think I did. Yeah. It may shoot just a hair to the right. So holding at 7 o'clock popped it. You get them figured out after a while. Uh... Which target needs a round? I guess the plate does. One more. Cannot quit on a miss now. <laughs> it's like I don't have to. So anyway, just a good, good old uh, all-around rifle. Seems like to me, if you like a bolt gun, uh, I don't know. You may have a preferred company or a rifle you like a lot better than than Savage. 
I don't know who, now Ruger, you've seen the Ruger here, the Scout rifle. Steyr makes a really nice Scout rifle. There's probably some other companies too in the bolt action configuration. Again, the, the Jeff Cooper concept uh, that, that might suit you just, just fine too. But uh, this one seems like it would be a, a good choice, you know, if you're looking for this kind of rifle. Uh, not exceptionally cheap, I guess, but I, I don't know. You know, I don't really look at pricing on uh, new bolt action hunting rifles, uh, this kind of rifle, very often. I'm not even sure what they, yeah, as you know, you don't see a lot of them uh, shot here. And I, I uh, so that's one reason I wanted to get it. You know, we don't do a lot of these, these kinds of rifles. Again, because I don't hunt, I don't really enjoy, all right, let's get the bench rest out today. I've got a target over there at 400 yards. We're gonna see how close we can put the bullets together on that target. It's not a kind of shooting that I really ever do. You know, I just like to knock things around and, uh, and shoot other ways mostly. So I'm not, as, and I'm not sure what I can share with some of you folks that hunt a lot or you do bench rest competition shooting. I have really nothing to tell you, nothing I can help you with, you know, so much more about these kinds of uh, things than I do. Uh, but I, I feel like we ought to do more of them ever, occasionally, you know, something that's a, uh, I don't know, a nice functional rifle, you know, you might have interest in it. Uh, again, most deer, if you're deer hunting, uh, you're looking for something, you uh, know, pretty powerful round like this. Uh, you know, it's in most parts of the country are, are taking a very reasonable distances, just like the stuff I'm shooting over there, you know, the plate, you know, or whatever, or those animals, if I shot at them with this, but they would da damage those animals. They're not hardened steel. So anyway, uh, looks like a pretty nice all around rifle. Uh, you know, if you're a wood and steel person, you're not gonna like that stock, of course, but if you want the practicality of something uh, you can just take out in any kind of weather, uh, that, that might be nice. I don't know. Anyway, I've always been impressed by the Scout concept. I, I, I just have. Uh, they're, they're, they're pretty interesting. I, a lot of the bolt action rifles I like, whether it's an Autry Springfield or a Lee Enfield, you know, Mark III, uh, those are the firearms that I prefer over these. And those are the ones I'm gonna prowl around with and plink with quite a lot, uh, just because of the history and everything. But uh, these, these things have a lot going for them and this might be right up your alley or it might not. Either way, life is good. We'd like to thank one of our sponsors, SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. SDI has fully accredited distance learning programs where you can get certified in gunsmithing or even an associate's degree in firearms technology. Of course, the study includes hands-on experience, which is important, of course. So check it out. Uh, go to sdi.edu or just click on the link in the description. Okay? And also, we'd like to remind you to check out the Hickok 45 Facebook page and the Hickok 45 and Sun channel and its Facebook page as well as Gun Culture Radio on iTunes. Now remember all this because I'm coming to your house randomly over the next year or two to give you a quiz on it. Okay? Thank you.